Welcome, gentle viewer, to the third Coral Finder Toolkit revision movie. You can use the following slideshow to test your skills while using the Coral Finder. Just watch and pause this slideshow so you can study the test corals. At the end of the exercise, the remainder of the movie runs through the same corals as worked examples. Revision Movie 3 assumes you have viewed and understood the concepts outlined in the entire six-part Coral Finder Toolkit training movie series. That said, this movie will take you into some grey areas that we've been holding back. It contains tips, tricks, secret knowledge and snippets of that rarest commodity known as the awful truth. Your slideshow starts now. Specimen 1. The reason I'm showing you this one is because hard corals that live in crevices and caves are often difficult to identify. Because they are shaded and contorted, they don't take on the typical forms of a genus that you are used to. In general, it's a good idea, and you'll get less grief from corals, if you deal with ones that are not shaded or in tight competitive situations. But gentle viewer, this coral offers another lesson. The little pedestal might suggest that thin plates, vases and tears would be a good starting place. Well it ain't. There's a clue in the foreground and the colours and textures of these nearby corals offer another clue. Let me put you out of my misery. This is the juvenile form of the free living coral genus Fungia. Mushroom corals begin life on stalks before detaching and becoming free living. The juvenile attached forms are known as anthocoli. That's singular, anthocolis. These juveniles might be anthocoli, but they might also be regrowths from an overturned adult. Note the shape and colour of the tentacle tips, very characteristic of mushroom corals, even when small. Specimen 2. This specimen is easy to find using the coral finder, and we are going to use it as an entree to another subject. Let's go branching, no axial coralite, greater than 2 millimeters. And there it is at the bottom of the page, Tubastria. You will note in the characters field that it says that Tubastria is not a true reef building coral. Reef building or hermotypic corals, contain zooxanthellae, the symbiotic algae the coral needs to capture enough energy to build their expansive colonial lifestyles. Tubastria and another similar looking genus called Dendrophilia are usually found in caves and ledges. They are small, do not need light to survive, and have large yellowish tentacles occasionally exposed during the day. While they are true hard corals, that is, sclerotinians, they are not true reef-building corals and are known as ahermatypic or azoazanthellate to indicate that they don't contain the symbiotic algae and that they do not contribute much to the overall bulk of reef construction. Specimen 3. Okay, this one looks easy. Branching, axial coralite, end of story, right? Right? Wrong. Gentle viewer, I bet you're thinking, but you said Acropora was an easy and reliable genus. Well, it is, with one exception, and this is it. 
In the comments section of the Axial Coralite Lookalike page, you will see Cyphastria decardia singled out for attention. There are over 130 species of Acropora, and this is the only non-Acropora coral species with an axial coralite. With experience, it's actually easy to spot for two reasons. It carries the distinctive bristly beaded colony surface texture of Cyphastria, and more often than not, it's semi-cryptic with poor branch development. But occasionally, it does rear up onto its hind legs, as you can see in this specimen from the Suva Lagoon in Fiji, where, surprisingly, it commonly forms large branching colonies. Specimen 4. Listen, gentle viewer, this is the sound I make every night for leaving Gardenoceras out of version 1 of the Coral Finder. I didn't have a photo, so I have a reason, which is better than an excuse. There is a difference. Still, it doesn't stop the tears. So now you know about Gardenoceras. Look it up on the Coral Hub or in Corals of the World. And yes, it will be in version 2 of the Coral Finder. Specimen 5. Looking at the growth form, I'd be thinking the columns key group with the branching key group as a backup. So let's check out the columns lookalike page. Hmm, nothing obvious here. It seems odd for the coral finder to get a column forming hard coral wrong, and it hasn't. Let's have another very close look at this so-called hard coral. Note how very small the coralites are. Note also, they are in two distinct sizes. And what are these hairs? This coral needs a shave. These are the kinds of clues that tell you it's time to check the comments section. Here it says, See also the non-sclerectinian stony coral, Heliopora. A mere turn of the page reveals our quarry. Heliopora is a bizarre reef-building soft coral. It's the only soft coral of its kind and has been around since the Lower Cretaceous. So you can feel privileged to have met a true living fossil. Heliopora is also unusual because of its blue coloured skeleton, although the colour can be masked by a brown exterior colour and snow white polyps. But the take home message here is anything with very small polyps of differing sizes and a five o'clock shadow should ring alarm bells. Specimen 6. Okay, so here we have the same deal as before. This one should be easy prey for the coral finder. Branching, no axial coralite, coralites less than 2 millimeters. Hmm, no candidate. Again, in big close-up, we have extremely small coralites of two sizes and a bad shave. Check the comments, and sure enough, it's another one of those pesky, stony, non-sclerectinians. This time, it's Millipora, the dreaded fire coral. Note that Millipora can also be massive, encrusting, or form blade-like columns. And P.S. Yes, they do hurt. Specimen 7. Now we are going to look at another strategy tip. Let's try the massive or thick colony key group, Coralites with common walls, 6 to 15 millimetres. You can scan the page looking for a close-up like this, but it's not there. But it is on the next page, Coralites with common walls, greater than 15 millimetres. This is Acanthastria, a coral with distinctive thick tissue and spiky septal teeth. You'll also find Acanthastria in the comments section of the 6 to 15 millimeter page. A consequence of keeping the coral finder small and practical is that there are limitations to what can be represented. So if you don't see what you're looking for, it's a good idea to jump up or down in scale if you have that option. It takes about 10 seconds. Also, remember, when you make a call about wall structure being common or separated, you are determining your options. If you do not have any luck with a specimen, 
try the opposite option. What if you had said this coral had separate walls? Again, it only takes 10 seconds to check. Specimen 8. Okay, let's do this. Massive. Coralites with separate walls, less than 8 millimeters. You can scan the lookalike page, but you won't find a smooth colony surface option there, or in the comments for that matter. That's because this coral is lying about its shape. What we classified in the massive key group is actually an example of a genus that more commonly forms thin plates. Go to lookalike page 17, colonies with thin plates and rounded coralites. And there is our target genus, Turbinaria. To solve this dilemma, let's look at specimen 8 again for a clue to how it all went wrong. Note the thin plating parts of the colony at the margins. This coral has actually grown as a veneer over some pre-existing massive form. With experience, you'll learn to see the signs of overgrowth. And in the case of Turbinaria, the distinctive smooth surface texture with mid-size round coralites. Specimen 9. Here is the next monster in our fantastical bestiary. We appear to have a thick, flat plate with dividing blade-like edges. So we could try massive, thick colonies, or the thin plates key group. But I could tell you now we'd be wrong. The tendency for the colony to divide at the margins is the clue. That's because this is actually a branching coral that sometimes forms blades and columns. Because it is living on a wave-swept outer barrier, this coral has had the inclination to form upright branches beaten out of it by the ocean swells. So let's try branching, no axial coralite, coralites greater than 2 millimeters. And there is Isopora, smiling sweetly back at you. You'll recall about halfway through the second Coral Finder Toolkit training movie, we use Isopora as an example of the extreme shape-shifting capability of hard corals. By keeping your mind alert to this possibility, it will matter less when you encounter an unusual growth form. Think of corals as clay. Recognising the type of clay, that is, the unique textures and characters of a genus, can help overcome the problem of growth form plasticity. Specimen 10. Okay. Here's the last coral, and it looks pretty straightforward. Let's try the thin plates key group with fingers, tubes, and columns uprising. That's lookalike page 23. A quick scan, and zundap, the two genera with tiny coralites, leap out at you. Visually, my gut feel says that Montipora is the answer, with parietes a less likely choice. I check the character text and the tiny coralite size and colony surface ridges would seem to confirm our choice. Okay, so we're wrong. It's actually parietes. How can we tell? Well, you can't. And here, finally, is the awful truth. There are a small group of parietes and Montipora species where it is almost impossible for the human eye to resolve the identity of the genus underwater. Here are two examples side by side. Even with a magnifier, you cannot see the characteristic skeletal features of each genus underwater. This is what the skeletons actually look like. The fundamental difference of these textures reveals that these genera are from entirely different families of corals. This is a rare example of where even an expert may need to collect a small sample to confirm the genus after the dive. Don't despair though. In the vast majority of cases, these genera are clearly defined, with Montipora's complex skeletal surface textures generally visible and distinctive underwater. <laughs>